And while time and luck have fortunately meant that there have been no outbreaks at horse events to date, there are others who haven't been as lucky. Natalie Bohm is a member of an unenviable group of Hendra survivors. It is also a very small group with only three of the seven human victims of the virus still alive today. Natalie's mind and body faced the terror of the Hendra virus and survived. Today, she is meeting Dr. Deborah Middleton for the first time. Dr. Middleton is a veterinary pathologist at the Australian Animal Health Laboratory, or ARL. Natalie has come to the high security CSIRO ARL building to swap stories and get to know the scientist who, in her opinion, is a hero to the equine community. Natalie and Deborah both have unique experiences with Hendra and are equally as interested in hearing about each other's experiences with the virus. Natalie's been through a, you know, a life transforming event um, and uh, that I suspect, you know, will always be with her. And um, I think it sort of affirms to me, I guess, um, the value of the work that we're doing, um, that it is important. Hendra is a uniquely Australian problem. It's not going to go away. It's hard to communicate with people when they don't have any idea what the virus can actually do. We deal with a lot of infectious diseases, but it is the most overwhelming infection. I mean, it can turn a perfectly healthy 500 kilogram thoroughbred into a mortally ill creature in 48 hours. Yeah, being so sick with something, you realise how important your body is. And um, I guess I learnt quicker than other people. The fatigue is unbelievable. The pain mm. when I ride, it's not just a physical, it's mm. a mental and and um, your body just, you, you want to do it, but you, you can't. So you've not been able to go back to your career? I just do a couple of days a week just to get me out. Because I guess like I could have just rolled over and felt sorry for myself, but I never was that sort of person. I, you know, saw people who were my colleagues um, infected with this Hendra virus. Um, the outbreak at Redlands, I think, was a turning point, you know, for me personally. And then the following year, you know, another colleague succumbed to the same mm. infection. And I'm thinking, you know, we can do something about this. This is actually a place where science can help. You know, a lot of people hear about it and what it can do and stuff but I guess I faced it I've seen yeah. it yeah. Yeah. I just but, well you've got a unique relationship yeah that's you know, that's probably a unique relationship further north in Natalie's home state of Queensland Annie Fishburn from Blazing Saddles in Cairns still remembers when Hendra paid a visit to their property in June of 2012 Biosecurity regulations in Queensland state that properties where a Hendra outbreak has taken place must be quarantined immediately. This quarantine can last anywhere from a few weeks to a few months. For businesses like Blazing Saddles, a quarantine shutdown can have a fierce impact. Unlike residential properties, businesses could have dozens if not hundreds of potentially infected horses and people to factor in. I wouldn't even hesitate now. As soon as we knew that the vaccine was available, um, you know, it was just something that we knew had to be done. This horse in particular, she was out around the back dam grazing and one of the tours had um, seen that she wasn't looking right at all, so they walked her home. And um, I suppose their first reaction was that she might have had a bit of colic or something caught in her throat. Describing the symptoms, our vet thought it might have been Hendra from the start. Whilst he was pretty sure it was, he obviously couldn't confirm it until he sent it off to biosecurity, which took 24 hours. Um, once we've, we got the notification that it, she actually had died of Hendra, and biosecurity obviously closed the, the premises and we had to put notification up. We had to inform the general public, which is always, you know, a worrying thing to do because you just don't know how the public will react. We had no horses, no horse riding, no income in that side until we actually had um, the, the complete all clear. That did actually hit us pretty heavily for that whole year. This was in June of last year so there was no vaccination. It wasn't until August when our vet had told us that there was actually a vaccination that had come on the market that we actually felt 
quite relieved that our business was intact. The vaccination has not only given us peace of mind and security, it's given all the tourists and the local community that peace of mind as well.